Chapter 2. There are small secondary schools and there are big secondary schools, but more often than not, the building you'll be spending the next few years of your life in will be a whole lot bigger than your primary school. It can feel like a bit of a maze in more ways than one, and when I talk to people who are a few weeks into school and are now confidently sashaying from lesson to lesson like they're in Strictly Come Dancing, one of the biggest fears they can remember is that of being lost. Now, Lost doesn't just mean not being able to find your way around. That's easily solvable. Plenty of people are there to help with that. You'll have tours and there'll be helpers, teachers and older students to aid you in getting from A to B. Don't worry about asking. Generally, human beings are lovely and want to help you get around. People get it and you're new and you're still figuring it all out. But there might also come a time in that first week which will feel about a month long and 10 seconds long at the very same time. When you might have a little bit of a reminisce about the good old days at primary school and how you wish it was this time last year when you only had one classroom to remember and you were the oldest at break time. It's understandable and completely expected. You're at a new school and it can all feel quite alien. But never ever feel like you're alone. Even if you're the only person starting that day in the second year because one of your parents got a new job at the other end of the country. People have the exact same fears that you do. Here are my top tips to navigate the feeling of being in a maze in many ways in the first few days of secondary school. Number one, ask your way around. Pretty simple, isn't it? If you're stuck, ask people. 99 times out of 100, they'll be lovely, kind and helpful. And if you're unlucky enough to pick that one person who's not very nice, then ask someone else. Most people will point you in the right direction and might even give you a personal escort to your next lesson. And then, as an added bonus, you can count on them for a kind word when you see them in the corridor next. Number two, I accept help and find your go-to. Things won't get better, neither your worries nor being geographically challenged if you don't firstly admit that you need a helping hand and then I accept one when it's offered. Your teachers will ask you a million times if you're alright and whether you need a hand and they mean it. Take the help. These are the people who have been to school themselves. They've done all the falling out with friends and the failed young romances. They've experienced the heartache of not getting the grades they wanted and the weird feeling of turning into an adult with the anger and sadness and happiness all at the same time and just wanting to shout, ah, everyone is an idiot and nobody understands me, at the wall. They already navigated the waves of results day and sailed onto that slightly calmer seas of being a young adult. They really know their stuff and they can help you. And yes, some teachers might come across as scary when you first meet them. Some might come across as funny or even so embarrassing. But that's okay because they're not going to become your best pal. In fact, they're looking after you even when you don't realise it. And teachers are trained to keep you safe all the time. They'll be there through the best and worst, the highs and lows and the happy and sad tears over the next few years. We've got you. There might be some teachers you just don't get on with and those you think are completely brilliant. They'll likely be one who comes your go-to for when you need help. Everyone's got go-to people in their life. So if you fall out with someone, who do you tell to make you feel better again? Or if something happens that makes you feel bad, who do you ask for support? You'll have your people at home. You'll have your mates from primary school. In fact, if I asked you to tell me right now who your go-to person is, I bet you could. Don't because I can't hear you and you're reading a book, especially if you're reading this in the dead of night and you share a room with your sister or something. Anyway, the point is, find that person at your new school. There are times when you need an adult for advice or help, so take some time to think about it. Um, think about who that is. Don't force it. You'll realise who that person is or people, as there are, are very likely to be loads of them. Really quickly, and the first few days you spend meeting your form tutors, teachers, head of year, head teacher, and everyone else in school who will give you a good idea of, you, of who you think that might be. Then ask them things. Tell them what's up and understand that they won't judge you if you're a crying mess. They just want you to be okay. And pss, secret, they're not going to be annoyed with you if they're not your go-to for the whole time in school. You'll change and adapt, become more confident and have sex bags along the way. All the while though, those humans at school are there for you to use. Number three, be honest. 
Some people will start secondary school and use every opportunity on social media and in real life to talk about how much I love it. I'm so good at geography, I'm in the top set, I've got loads of friends and I can't even believe I hung around with those babies in primary school because, oh, I'm so sophisticated now. The reality is that, while some of what people say may be true, it's best to understand Mr Burton's very scientific rule of reality about what people say when they're trying to look good and you're not feeling very confident yourself. Here goes. Number one, listen to what they say. For example, I love secondary school. I have so many friends and I'm never worried about my exams. Number two, understand what they say. Number three, I accept it. Um, they might feel like that but and that you don't, but that's okay. Number four, go about your own day and don't let it affect you. Remember, we're all going to face tough times. They come at different stages and those who are chiming on about how easy secondary school is might not actually feel it's quite as easy as they say they are. Be open, tell people about what you're thinking right now and be honest. Number four, do your research. If you're somebody who really struggles with directions, with forgetting stuff and being unable to remember where to go, then how do you get better at it? Training. If you know that walk from science to technology is going to be a nightmare, nightmare next week, then train yourself and do the route a few times during lunchtime. One of your mates might be in that class too. Tag along with them when they're doing the route for the first time. And slowly but surely, you'll get it. Number five, make sure you have a triangle of trust. Mr. Burton's triangle of trust. You, home parents and school and teachers. The triangle of trust is really important. And if at home, at school and you are working together, you'll be strong. Sometimes we all need a bit of extra help and that's fine. It doesn't make you any less amazing, any less of an amazing success in the school or in the future. But you do need to talk about things but you do need to talk about it to make things get better. Just open your cake hole and let us know what's up. You are a huge part of it, one third of it. Without you, it all falls down. It just sticks, it's just two sticks dangling in midair. Do your bit. It's proper science. It's actually not, but it makes sense. We all need to work together to make school work. And if one side stops trying, then it means things become a bit of a struggle. Number six, don't look back. Primary school might have been great, your final exam was brilliant, and you might have enjoyed your time there far, far more than you think you'll ever enjoy secondary school. As humans, when things go wrong or we feel uncomfortable, we often like to wish we could go back to a place that we felt happy. That's one of the reasons why we watch our favourite film 12 squillion times and why we all watch Harry Potter every Sunday afternoon back to back throughout November and December because it's nearly Christmas time. It's why we like a particular flavour of ice cream or why your folks might choose the same holiday destination every year. It's because it's comfortable and because our first memories of it are good, then part of going back about it is remembering those times and trying to create more of those memories. If your only taste of ice cream had been petrol flavour, do you think you'd want to go back and have some more? No. In this case, going back to primary school isn't an option, and that's a good thing. You're in a new, exciting stage of your life, so we need to look at what we've got and make sure it works for us. Looking back might make us feel better in the short term, but it doesn't help us find our new path in the long term. Whatever your experience, there are plenty of teachers, parents, resources and friends around to help you. Be brave, be bold and be the secondary school you, and it will be amazing.